with Toby, Chief Solution Architect at AD-Link, to talk about the impact of edge and fog computing on manufacturing. I know you're doing a lot of work with clients that are considering fog and edge, going from cloud perhaps. What are the key benefits or obstacles? Can you net that out into a couple of bullet points that people need to look at? Yeah, so the first one is the physical constraints on your system. So sometimes you don't have uh, you can't afford the cost of, the, of transmitting to the cloud and back again, just in terms of the time it takes to make a decision, or you don't have the capacity to, to send all that. The second one is the economics of it. You have to take into account how the cost of transmitting data and whether the benefit you're deriving from, from leveraging the cloud is actually worth that cost and whether it makes more sense to bring it closer to the asset. And the final is security, privacy, and regulatory. So sometimes you just, you're not willing to, to or, or can't afford the risk of opening up th that data to, to leave your premises. As manufacturing gets more intelligent, there's more and more data that they need to capture. And there is more um, automation that they can do on that. So as they capture the data, they do some, some analysis on it, which gives them something they can make a judgment on. And that judgment then can effectuate an action uh, that they can do. And, and where they are today is they're using the data that's coming off of the, um, off the, the machines that they've instrumented um, to, to do the anal analysis. But what's happening is a human then steps in and makes a judgment and, and actually d does the action. As, as we move forward um, uh, to the future and to this IoT's grand vision, those judgments and effectuating the actions are actually going to be done by the machines themselves. Okay, you've convinced me. I want to get going, I want to make the transition, I want to leap ahead of my competition that are just doing cloud, I want to get into fog and edge. What sorts of products do I need that I didn't need before, or uh, processes or people? How am I going to make that change? So the first first product you would need, Adrian, is if your assets aren't connected, you need some, form, some way of instrumenting those assets and, and okay. extracting that data. So whether that you have sensors that are analog and you need to convert that into digital data, or you um, have dark assets that you need to extract data out of, or you have assets that you know use some of these um, protocols that we talked about previously, you know, in that protocol jungle, you need a product that will, will extract that data and put it into a form uh, that uh, can be analyzed. And that, that you know, will be both hardware and software. Okay. And so that could be a gateway. So a lot, of, a lot of deployments out there in IoT are using gateways to do that. And then moving up the, the stack, you need uh, some server capacity to do some of the, you know, heavier computation. And there you need uh, two things. You need the, the hardware to do the computation, but you also need some software that takes data from your gateways and brings it to your server. So there's some data movement um, capabilities that you need there. Okay. And then of course you need the, the software or the infrastructure to do the dynamic provisioning on your fog node and, and manage the infrastructure for you. Thanks, Toby. To recap, if you're looking at fog and edge computing for manufacturing or to build or retrofit a smart factory, remember Toby's three key considerations. Physical constraints, which may make fog and edge technology the only viable solution. Economic opportunities, which may justify the investment based on improved performance or the ability to create new solutions at the edge. And security, privacy, and regulatory issues, which may make fog and edge solutions more practical than a cloud-only approach. For more information, please visit the URL at the end of the video.